Son Piker just got. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to Logan Paul apologizing to CoffeeZilla. Let's do it. CoffeeZilla made a video on it. We're going to watch it. Let's take a look. Well, it's finally over. Logan Paul apologized. CoffeeZilla, your slime is. He is a lopsided journalist with an agenda, more like an internet criminal. Oops, wrong video. That was the first response. He actually apologized in another response. I took a little nap. It's like a little, nap. It's like a little annoying nap. It bothers me. The defamation lawsuit. That is f***ing happening because this is wrong. This is f***ing wrong. Hold on, wait a second. That's not it either. Uh, turns out it's actually on his secondary channel. That's, that's why I couldn't find it. It's entitled, Thank You Coffeezilla. It's the third response. Bro, this dude's secondary channel still has 5.28 million, by the way, which is insane. From Logan Paul. And it's a pretty big change in Logan's attitude so far. So let's see what he has to say to us. Coffeezilla is not a criminal. Oh, that's a relief. I thought Logan was going to hire me. But in all seriousness, this video <laughs> does have some major admissions in it I want to go through. For one, Logan apologizes to me. I called him. I apologized. Uh, my initial response to his series was that of, of, of fire uh, and ego. Not only that, Logan also pledges a $1.3 million refund plan for people who bought his NFTs. I am personally committing 1,000 ETH to this, which is about $1.3 million. In addition to that, he also promises to finish CryptoZoo, which was left abandoned. And then step three, obviously finish and deliver the game as outlined in the white paper. Now, I'll be honest, this is a big change in tone. And honestly, a lot of this is good news. It's great that victims are going to get something back. Logan seems to acknowledge his continuous lapse in judgment. He's not suing me, which is also cool. And frankly, this new response is just uh, way better than his last two. I think we can all acknowledge that, while also acknowledging that it's not really a perfect response either. There are still major problems here. Like, for example, many of the victims just have been ignored in this response. A lot of accusations have gone unanswered. And worse, Logan still seems to be playing the victim a lot. So in this video, I'm going to do my best to give Logan credit where credit is absolutely due, while also sharing moments where I think this apology fell flat. And let me start with a positive. For example, I think if you are an outsider who is not affected by this scam and you wanted a reason to love Logan Paul again, I think this nails it. I mean, he's giving back some of the money, he's apologizing. So if you're a card carrying member of the Low Gang, you can rest easy here. Logan says he's sorry, he says he's making things right. And I think that's the point of this video is to speak to his core audience, to tell them he didn't scam anyone. And for what it's worth, I think Logan succeeds here. The problem is I don't think- I am a member of the Low Gang, so I'm very excited about this. As a member of the Low Gang, I'm so, I'm so excited. I or the CryptoZoo holders were who Logan was really addressing here. And this is where the response falls more flat because he doesn't adequately pee, address the real victims of CryptoZoo, which I, I think they're rightfully angry about. And I wanted to spend some time talking about that because, again, they've been the heartbeat of this whole story, and they feel very differently about this response than Logan's core audience does. They don't feel like it's enough, and I want to talk about why. Starting with the $1.3 million repayment plan, because obviously this is the strongest part of Logan's entire response, actually opening up his wallet. Uh, and I don't want to minimize that in this video. I just do want to put it in context because $1.3 million is a lot of money. Unfortunately, the scam was much bigger than $1.3 million. So the fact is most victims are not going to be made whole by this plan. Just in Zoo Coins alone, blockchain evidence shows $7.7 .7 million was stolen by Logan's team, depending on who you believe. And this refund does nothing for those victims. It doesn't even apply to the holder of Zoo Coins at all. You get nothing if you bought this in-game currency. This refund only applies to current egg holders. So they can cash out that NFT for the initial mint price in crypto, which matters sort of because crypto has crashed a lot. So even though people spent $2.5 million on these eggs, in order to refund all these holders at mint price, it now only costs $1.3 million in today's money, which again is nice, but doesn't do enough because the zoo coins were most of this scam. I mean, that's where most of the money was spent. It wasn't just on the NFTs. It was on this in-game currency. Up which Logan seems to have no intention of refunding. And his response for why is pretty bad. 
He responds to somebody who lost $80,000 who told him, I hope this isn't just doing what you have to do technically to not get sued. Logan replies with a screenshot of his white paper and later explains to another member of the Discord, I believe there has been a misconception here. As outlined in the white paper, Zoo was created to support CryptoZoo and was not intended to be an investment vehicle. When you sold or bought is not my decision. And look, to be fair to him, there was a misconception that Zoo was an investment vehicle, but it's a misconception that he created. I mean, he's the one who said CryptoZoo was a fun game that earned you money. And how it earned you that money was that your NFTs earned you Zoo tokens you know, things that were supposed to have value. That was the whole point of the game. So to suggest that these coins weren't advertised as valuable or an investment vehicle is insane, especially since Logan's own team had rules for selling based strictly on the value of said investment vehicle. Quote, yep. rules for selling, no selling until a $200 million market cap. So I think it's fair to say if Logan's own team were buying zoo coins early, waiting for them to go up in value to a certain level and then selling them, that sounds like an investment vehicle, albeit a very stupid one. So this explanation definitely doesn't hold water. And Logan obviously just doesn't want to be on the hook for zoo coins. Instead, he just kind of wants to refund the much smaller part of the NFTs. What makes this even worse is that this refund doesn't even apply to everyone who bought these NFTs because some of these people sold their NFTs at a deep loss thinking that CryptoZoo was over, that it was abandoned. And there's actually a way you could have tracked this whole thing or Logan could have and, you know, found a way to repay all the people who lost money on eggs. But instead, this refund only applies to current holders, meaning nobody who sold during the year and a half this project was abandoned gets anything back which is a large percentage of the actual victims. And this is pretty bad. This was brought to Logan's attention by one of the people in the Discord. Joao says, quote, Logan Paul, what will happen to the people who sold everything at a loss when the project appeared to be, quote, abandoned? Will everyone who minted be able to get that refund or? I think like at a certain point, it's like there is, I think, liability on the user themselves, right? Like I, I think... At a certain point, like, you just got to be like, all right, well, you know, you kind of bought into the scam, right? Like, y individually. And, and yeah, you know, you lost for that reason. I guess, like, in a normal circumstance, though, it's like, I mean, Elon Musk is currently literally going uh, to a trial specifically over this exact same thing. No, victim blaming? No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Right now, there is an ongoing legal battle that Elon Musk is uh, is overtaking, specifically about his tweet saying that he was going to take uh, Tesla private at 420 and he had funding secured for it, which is why a lot of people bought into the stock at its peak. And then, of course, when they found out that that was a lie and it was just him being stoner, bro, making 420 uh, blaze up memes, they lost a lot of money because they bought high and then they were, a, they were forced to sell low. Now, that's stock manipulation, okay? That is securities fraud, and that is a regulated security, so you can't really do that, right? Um, Elon, I think, literally paid a, a fine for it, too, specifically. But this is unregulated, unless the SEC decides to take it on. And uh, there are efforts that he can, I mean, Logan Paul can engage in to kind of right those wrongs. But as far as people being like $20 million fine, yeah, it was nothing. He was slapped with a $20 million fine. Do you know how tiny that is? Was it $20 million? I thought it was even less than that. But $20 million is like nothing. Fuck you mean? But like people being, people saying like, what will happen to people that, uh, you know, sold at a loss? It's like when the project was abandoned, like, I don't know. I don't know how you can compensate everyone, but let's see. Just the current owners. Now, in Replage and Logan, Re Discord Shit. said, if you sell, it's the current owners. Now, in reply to this, someone in the Discord said, if you sell, you lose common investing knowledge. And Logan replies, seeming to agree with this idea, which is just kind of a terrible perspective for Logan to have when he seems to be saying that he wants to refund these people. And he's the reason a lot of these people left. And this is where Logan's new apology starts to ring more hollow. It's in all of the follow-ups after the response video because 
I, I don't know if he can help himself from betraying how he really feels about this because in another Discord exchange, Logan says, please do not put any more money into CryptoZoo, which by the way, is quite reasonable to say, but then somebody follows up and says, guys, can someone explain what he said with not investing? But rather than replying, oh, guys, I just meant like I don't want anyone else losing money or, you know, I don't want anyone else recklessly gambling. Logan replies instead, quote, I will no longer be the scapegoat for anyone's financial decisions, which is a wild response for someone who's claiming to refund people because it implies that he thinks he's the victim here. And this is just insane to say as the face of this project, which got everyone involved because... I think it betrays how he feels about this situation. He doesn't seem to see anything wrong with advertising a game that will make you money, it never delivering millions of dollars being stolen by criminals he hired. And then when all of those people want their money back, he feels like he's the scapegoat. Like, oh, these guys shouldn't have believed me when I advertised to them a fun game that will make you money. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, Logan had a simple job to do. All he had to do was just come out, apologize, get as much money back for the victims as possible. But he himself can't help but play the victim here. In fact, I have a third example of how Logan might really feel because Logan tweeted right before this response. He says, quote, the matrix is real. Pray you never become its target. Yeah. Now, I guess he's- Which is of course, CoffeeZilla who is a part of the Matrix. Trying to channel Andrew Tate here unsuccessfully, basically saying like, ah, oh, I'm getting attacked, not because I did anything wrong or scammed anyone. I'm just, I'm just too much of a truth teller. I'm just an enemy of the system. That's why I must be getting attacked. But if that's the case, we then have to wonder, did the Matrix force you to apologize? Did it force you to hand back 1.3 million? I just think comments like this go so far to undercut his apology because it's very clear that instead of actually like caring about the victims, he feels like he's a victim. I mean, he's saying like, oh, pray you never become its target. Who's the matrix though, Logan? Like, is it your fans who got robbed? Who are the agents coming after you? I, I know it's not me. I know you're not saying I'm the matrix here in my $10 million studio, because after all, you're thanking me. You're thanking the matrix. Like, what is this response? It's so childish the way he speaks about this stuff. And again, this isn't to be dismissive of Logan's actions if he follows through because there is a lot of good that 1.3 million can do. And you know what? If he goes back and he finishes the game, that's also good. But it's just so frustrating when the good that Logan seems to be doing, he's doing. I think he's in a situation where he's just like cucked because he did the wrong thing. And restitution when you've like very clearly done a wrong thing that perhaps might even have some legal consequences for you down the line uh is always going to be impossible and he's trying to get out of this with like the least amount of scathing you know what i mean he he just he doesn't want to be hit with anything so he's like he's just doubling down on he's doubling down on like the fact that it's not a scam to begin with and it's just not gonna work for him like because if he takes full accountability, then, like, he's openly admitting to being a criminal. He's so fucking cooked. It's just so funny. It's... I'm sorry. It's it's extremely funny to me that he's, he's doubly cooked. Because if he admits to his wrongdoings then then you know he he might even be liable like he might he might be legally liable if he's <laughs> if he doesn't he might still be liable but also he's not going to he's not going to ever have i mean he's going to lose more fans as a consequence yeah it's the best kind of cash 22 straight up yeah that would be the funniest though if he rug pulls the zoo coins once again after he like gets a bunch of idiots to buy in that would be hilarious actually the bare minimum of at the last possible second with motivations that seem to be in the proper context to say it lightly irreparably tainted by self-interest now i'm not going to address logan's other two response videos which are mostly like attacking me because logan sort of walked those back now he's apologized he said he was going to delete them i think he deleted one of them the other one's still up i don't know if the impulsive episode's going to go down either way it's just much less interesting now that he says he doesn't like mean it anymore he's not going to sue so i don't feel the need to publicly defend myself if you're curious about all the wild stuff that was wrong in those first two responses um i'll put the video live on my patreon but i didn't want to release it at the time because i thought there was a better chance 
at getting a good ending for the victims here if I was a bit more diplomatic with Logan at this critical juncture when he was deciding whether he was going to give money back or not. I don't know if I succeeded in moving the needle, but that was certainly my intention. Either way, now that Logan has responded with his plan and I've given my perspective on how much I think it's rooted in, you know, self-interest versus a genuine, you know, attempt to help out the victims, I think this is about as much as I'm going to be able to contribute to this situation. I mean, I do think it's incredible that even $1.3 million came of this, while I also can acknowledge that it's not nearly enough for the real victims of this. I'll follow up in the future to make sure that he actually gives that money away, but for now, I think most of the CryptoZoo victims, if they're still hungry for justice, are going to have to take it up with Logan in ways that are different than I can do on YouTube here. Which, by the way, I think some of them are. In fact, I just saw a lawyer on YouTube, uh, Attorney Tom. He's going to start the legal process going after Logan using stuff like the arbitration clause in their terms of service. So I just wanted to say, if you're a victim of CryptoZoo, you can check out that video, which I'll link to you if you want, uh, or consult with a lawyer, because I'm sure for the people who lost a lot of money, this is certainly not the end for them because they didn't get a full refund and I'm sure they'll be seeking one. But even though it's not the end for them, it is the end for me for now. This is the end of the CryptoZoo saga. And I wanted to say and give a huge heartfelt thank you to everyone who viewed this and supported me throughout this. It's been insane. Hey, the level let's of support go. When Logan was threatening us and I do not take it lightly. There is an alternate universe where if that hadn't happened, Logan would feel emboldened to sue me and probably not give much back to the victims. So it's your support that made all the difference and got the victims at least something. So that wraps it up. Thank you for watching. Damn, the $10 billion studio, dude. Derek Chauvin is appealing his conviction in the George Floyd murder, arguing that the trial wasn't fair. Can't wait for this to make its rounds in the uh, space. Out to the it's going to be absolutely uh, devastating. But hey, listen, let's get to the other Logan Paul situation. Okay. Let's get to the other Logan Paul situation, which is day two of Elon's securities fraud lawsuit. The judge is saying the court took on great pains to make this happen. I'm not going to accept 150 pages of stuff every night, the judge said, of objections. Are you devoting any other time to other cases? Yeah, I didn't think so. Right on cue, Elon is tweeting, the judge just finished talking about how he's tired of them objecting to the New York Times article. How many times do I have to rule on that, the judge said. Elon Musk immediately tweets, right on cue, says media wants to control what you know, which is why citizen journalism is essential. Of course, the irony of this statement in and of itself, which got 96,000 likes, is the reality that Elon Musk has banned a bunch of actual citizen journalists who happen to be on the left. When Elon Musk talks about citizen journalism, he's talking about people that will do his bidding. He's talking about people that live in like Malaysia, but then tweet about uh, Oregon, Portland, Oregon every goddamn day. You know, like Ian Miles wrong. Um, that's what he's talking about. He has quite literally destroyed essential citizen journalists. Uh, one of the uh, more popular ones was, again, a citizen journalist who, who was tracking his jets and tracking other jets, as a matter of fact. If you remember, that was a big fucking part of this saga. He also literally didn't just take down citizen journalists. He took down journalist journalists. Like, he, he took down, like, Chad Loader, many other anarchist writers, many other anarchist, uh, you know, reporters. But he also took down, like, you know, people who write for... <laughs> people who write for Washington Post. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, it's just... He just means whoever doesn't like him. That's it. Now, if you're familiar with today's topics, uh, topic, Elon Musk got Tesla tangled up in a securities fraud lawsuit for tweeting this. The funding was not, in fact, secured. I'm considering taking Tesla private at 420. Funding secured. Some of you may recall the SEC fined him $40 million in, a 2018, in 2018 as a result and forced him to step down as chair of Tesla's board. Now he's getting sued by investors who own stock over a 10-day period, claiming the tweet costs investors billions. In April, the judge presiding over this case determined that Musk's tweet were false. Now we have a jury that will rule on the extent of any damages, whether Musk acted deliberately, and whether the statements affected Tesla's share prices. Last but not least, Elon argued he wouldn't get a fair trial in San Francisco due to local negativity in the Bay Area and press coverage around Twitter acquisition. He asked the judge to relocate to West Texas instead. Obviously, the judge said no. This man sure does have his priorities straight today. 
The World Economic Forum should control the world, says Elon Musk. We're on recess, which is giving me time to catch up uh, to speed and perhaps giving you time to think more poll ideas. So I do find this uh, hilarious that he tweeted this because, like, he is the World Economic Forum. The fuck do you mean? On this in-game Wake currency. up! Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>